not just. Not just. It's all bladder. It's all bladder. And I'm not, I'm not so okay. You, if people say, that's a, you have, you have a lot of gold. Yeah, people say, I don't. <laughs> and I got rid of that for Not anymore. <laughs> wow. Wow. So where's the, like, do they take it through your, they, they take it through your navel? Through your navel? Yes. So it's good.
uh, or ourselves. And the most important thing is to start, you know, and do things like, I mean, corny shit. I mean, this is what I think. I think always corny shit. Like, print out a calendar, like a, just a page, you know. Print out a calendar of, just for the month of uh, December. Get some gold stars. Give yourself a gold star every day you be right for 20 minutes. Little things like that that make you think like, see, I'm doing something, you know? And I bet if you do it in January, by the end of January, you won't need the gold stars anymore and you'll be feeling more like yourself, you know? Um, but you do have to prioritize your, your work uh, if it's important to you, you know? You do. And it's hard to prioritize your work. Because not only is the world maybe telling you that it's not important, but your life might be saying, yeah, there are other things you have to do. Yeah, no, that's so helpful. You're right. You don't have to remind me of your name. It's 
yourself. Or Izzy. 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 No, Izzy, you're so right. It's like, yeah, you can write something and work up the courage and don't worry about it. But uh, that's why I like the gold stars. Because even if there's, sometimes I sit down for 20 minutes and there's nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. But the gold star is like, you know, and you can activate, you can remind yourself that once you were seven years old and getting a gold star on your paper felt good. And you know. So that's very good. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Hey, hey, like T A I. T A I. Meet yourself where you are. Same saying, right? Like, be okay with wherever it is you are, and just go from there. You know, that's really important. Um, and even even if you're working on something that you know requires you to show up to the same work day after day after day for a long time, you still have to meet yourself where you are. You know, um, and do what you can. You know, in yoga we say just best effort. Just your best effort every day. Which might look to others, you know, oh, eh, she's only doing eh, eh, or she, you know, but so what about them? <laughs> or John, actually. the writing, maybe put what, something that you enjoy that's creative, mm -hmm. maybe it's cooking that day, mm -hmm. or maybe it's uh, drawing, because for me, I'll, if, I, if I get stuck writing, I go to painting, mm -hmm. sometimes paint the watercolor freely, mm -hmm. and stuff, so I get creative juices, you know, mm -hmm. and then channel it into what I really want to work on. Mm -hmm. Um, starting off small mm -hmm. uh, instead of just tacking on like a big script or novel or whatever. Mm -hmm. Lately what I've been doing is index cards. Mm -hmm. I literally just write a plot or whatever the conflict is going to be in a scene and then once I know like okay so this is how it's going to start, this is how it's going to end, now mm -hmm. I can write all the middle stuff and the nuances mm -hmm. into the bigger picture. And the other thing um, I have a question for you. What are some ways that I remember in your last workshop I was <laughs> listening while I was working. Um, you said to just write through the whole script all the way to the end. Right. Now I've written the ending. Oh. I'm just missing like a piece before it. Right. Um, what are some ways that you tackle on writer's block? Right. Like how right. do you push through that? Right now. Um, so, uh, it, it's a long conversation, but it's great because I, this is one of, this is my favorite thing to talk about, really. It, it doesn't, it's like Santa Claus, you know, it might, may or may not exist, but we spend a lot of time thinking about Santa. 
um, write about the same thing. I don't know if it exists or not. It might just be an opportunity. You know, it might just be an opportunity for you to go deeper. So how do I deal with opportunities to go deeper? You just, if you call it something different, first of all, call it something different. Right, it's blocked. It's a big block in front of your face, right? Won't let you write. Ha ha, Mildred, you can't write because I'm writing a block. That's really good. That's not, so what if you say, ha ah, ha, Mildred, I'm an opportunity for you to go deeper with your work. Is that fun? Isn't that fun? That's fun, right? That's a good thing. Okay, so maybe that's all it is. Ha ha, Mildred, I'm saying slow down because you need to go deeper with your work. You need to look at something closely. I know it's, it's really fun. That's why I asked him to have his mic open. Okay? Yeah. So how do we deal with opportunities to go deeper with our work? Right? That feel maybe inside, it feels like, do you feel the writer's opportunity to go deeper with your work anywhere in your body? Where do you feel it? Yeah, does it feel good? Does it feel good? Or it's like a... It's a push and pull, like stomach flu? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I just ate a good meal? Or like, oh, I don't feel good. Oh. I ate a good meal. Okay. But, so, but your difficulty or your opportunity to go deeper with your work. If you have a part, so you've written all the way through from the beginning to the end, right? Yes? Are you rolling your eyes? Is it yes or no? Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, but so you have a piece before the end that's not quite right. Yes. Okay, so it's an opportunity to go deeper with your work. Right. So what you do, is, what I usually do, is I would suggest making a list. I love lists. And last time we had someone, we talked about this. Anyway, um, yeah, check it out. Right? So uh, make a list of ten stupid things that could happen. And they have to be stupid. And they have to, you know, have something to do with the world and the thing that you're writing, right? Ten stupid things that can happen. And invariably, you're going to like one of them tremendously. And that's probably the one that you can use. Right? But that's a wrong with what Izzy was saying. We, we lower the bar. So ten stupid things that can happen, try and then pick one. And go with it. Okay? That's kind of a... But we write all the way to the end so that we can get an idea of what it is. Instead of trying to perfect the beginning. Which a lot of us tend to do. If I can only get the first line right! You know, you know? <laughs> write all the way to the end and you'll have a better sense of it. And that's in my experience. That's what I do. So might that be helpful? One, we reframe the thing we call writer's block and look at it as an opportunity to go deeper with that work. That's what it is. Number two, think of stupid solutions, and invariably, you know, one of them is going to really resonate. Okay? It'll be fun. Yeah, it's... Um, something that you just said that I am also struggling with is identifying what the piece is. Um, what do you mean? I, I don't know what I want to hone in on specifically yet, because there are so many different moving parts that every character is very flawed in very different ways from right. any other character, and so kind of coming up with one central idea of what is this is something that I'm for the first time right. getting down. Right. Have, have you done, have you gotten all the way to the end? No. Okay. It's completed in the instance right now, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know what this means that I want to reveal what exactly these flaws are with each person and why it's kind of created this dynamic that, uh -huh. that they're all part of. Right. But kind of identifying, and maybe it doesn't need to have like one specific idea. Maybe that is the idea is that all of these pieces are just encompass the idea and it'll get there at some point maybe. But, um, like, what's an example? Like, do you know the play? It's a play. Yeah. Do you know the play Hamlet? Yeah. Have you ever heard of that play? Yes, okay, great. Um, I love Shakespeare. Same. It's a, right? it's a Shakespeare. Well, I don't know if they could say adaptation or if it's based. Oh, oh but fine. But I don't really know what the difference is. But maybe okay. that, that's like a technical question. That's a technical question. But, 
I mean, but that's a good question. So is Shakespeare by Hamlet. So what's what's the you said what's the thing you need to do something? You said the, the like what is it? What what's the what's the idea? What's the idea? What do you mean? What's the idea of Hamlet? Because I'm not sure I know what you mean. I guess theme could be could be a word for it as well. Just by, I mean um, indecisiveness, I suppose. Is What's the concept of oh, Yeah. Did you go to uh, grad school? Or? I, I mean, I'm open to. So. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So, right, indecisive. So the theme of Hamlet, the, the idea of Hamlet is indecisiveness. Right. Right. Personally, me, only, I could never write a play that would, would that way. I, could, I would be so confused. Right? But I could write a play if I, if I said, what's the story of your play? Then I'm off and running, because that's characters doing shit. Right? right? What's the story of Hamlet? I can tell you that. I don't know what the theme of Hamlet is. I have no idea. You know? But I can tell you the story. And for me, literature um, is a bunch of great stories. And if they're told well, then all those things like theme and idea and meaning and all that fall from the tree like beautiful grapes or no, grapes or grown trees, apples, or, you know, you know, you know what I mean. So think maybe of the story. What's the story? Character A. You have some characters, right? Character A. What does she want? She wants her own identity. She wants her own identity. And what will that look like? frustration with everything around her and not knowing where to begin and finding this identity, but having an idea of where to start, but having that big point. Right. So what is she doing in the course of your play? She's inspiring a bunch of other people for how to get this thing that she feels isn't available to her. Okay. Okay. So, that, so just focus on and go through each character. What do they, then character A wants this. What is she doing to get it? Character B wants this. What are they doing to get it? By the end of the play, do they get it or not? And what do they realize along the way? It's, it sounds kind of like paint by numbers. It might be, but it's a good place to start. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that kind of, so think of in terms, I would suggest think in terms of story, and less in terms of the idea of it, because it makes me go, you know what I mean? Like, what are you telling me? Yeah. You know? Ideas will come. I think um, the paraphrase, uh, Sam Shepard, you know, the play and then the ideas. The ideas come out of the play and not the other way around. That's what he was into. That's what I'm into. Not every writer, every writer's different, you know? But that makes sense, though. For sure. Okay. It also grounds you yeah. in the everyday nuts and bolts of people and characters. And that. If your play has characters, then it's helpful. Yeah. So what would you say is the difference between an adaptation and is based on, or are they one of the same? Yeah, I'm not going to have, we're not going to have a conversation about the play To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> a new play by Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> <laughs> cost time and money and I have to have get a babysitter. So I have to choose very you know, choose very wise. Oh, but so so have you heard you know, so an adaptation. So I would say an adaptation is taking the nuts, you know, when you have the uh, it's very easy in jazz. Do you know jazz music? John Coltrane, My Favorite Things. He made a song called My Favorite Things. Da 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 Oscar and uh, Roger and the Hammerstein, right? Mm -hmm. It's an adaptation, it's a, you know, right? He's taking it. Mm -hmm. Then in jazz there are things called contrafacts, which are, you know the song I Got Rhythm? Mm -hmm. ba -da -ba -da, ba -da -ba -da. You know the song of the Flintstones? Mm -hmm. song? Ba -da, ba -da -ba -da. Same chords underneath. Same chords underneath. Right? There, one's a contrafact. So, 
when you strain for like a fucking egg, mm -hmm. is a riff or a contrafact on a scarlet letter. Okay. Okay. It's it's not is that you could, if you looked at the two of them you wouldn't what? You know, there's a lady named Hester. No, by the time I get home, they're in the blood, same thing. Okay? But something like uh, when I did the Gershwin's Porgy and Vest, very happily called it the Gershwin's Porgy and Vest, didn't have to say a new libretto by Sue Lloyd Parks. You know? Yeah. An, uh, you know, we, we adapted it. What I, I was recently hired to do a, a, an adaptation of a very famous opera. And when I told the people, hopefully it'll all come through and we'll work at the, with the Met, which is very exciting. And I told them, the original composer has made the wheel, right? All we got to do is roll the wheel forward. I don't need my name all over it. I'm going to roll the wheel forward. It's adapted by, but it's not a new, you know what I mean? Right. So it, it's a whole conversation about who gets licensed and who doesn't. Who wants to say they discovered something when there are people already living there? It's a whole big conversation, which we're not really going to have today. But I would say if you're straying very far afield, then you're doing a riff or a, you know, you're being inspired by, right? And if you're following very closely too, then you're adapting, you know? And that's what I would say. I would always err on the side of, Giving credit. Like I just did an adaptation of Native Son, actually. It's going to open Sundance. Adapted by. <laughs> you know, giving credit to the person who actually invented it and, and, and actually did the original work. So, does that make sense? Yeah, brother. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Najee. Najee, hey, Najee. How are you doing? Well, thank you. <laughs> what are you laughing? Uh, you're producing a piece. Yes. And uh, but you're inspired to write a new piece. Yes. How do you balance the two? So you're doing one. You got one show in production. Yes. And you're working as a uh, on it as a producer. Y yes. Okay. And then this other show here is something that you'd like to write. That's, yes. Okay. That I'm writing. Right. I feel inspired to write. How do you right. balance the time? Right, 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 right. So is producing the show taking up like? Dawn till dusk, can't see to can't see. I mean, what, what's the schedule? Like, you're gonna, uh -huh. when you're doing rewrites and like you're trying to, you know, figure out new things and the way things are working. Right. You know, like, do you suggest that I focus on just producing and working on that show or and hold off on the new piece or? How long is the, when are you gonna, when is your, the piece you're producing, when's it gonna open? Is there a, no, finish line no, soon or? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Is there a is a, a is there some kind of end point to the current cycle of rewrites that you're in? You see what I mean? Like we're gonna do some rewrites, we're gonna do a workshop, we're gonna and then by the end of the year we're gonna take a pause and we're gonna is there a certain Um Okay. This is a question that I asked you a while ago uh -oh. and I never I never <laughs> got a chance to get it answered. Oh okay. so, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Was it here? Was it in Washington? It was here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because yes. okay. uh, I was struggling because I was writing this new piece, but I was producing something, and it did go up. Okay. But I found myself stopping what I was writing to work on and, and producing, but like uh, to produce. But um, I really wish there was a way of working on both pieces at the same time. Yeah. Well, well, there is. It's time management. <laughs> Which is what we're gonna, we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. What I'm asking is, is there an end point? Meaning, a lot of projects that I work on, we work to a certain place, and then we do a workshop, and then we push pause. Okay. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, if, like by the end of the year, you work the team where you're producing. Mm -hmm. You guys are gonna push pause, mm -hmm. and there might be a two week. I get what you're saying. Hiatus. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when you work on your other piece. Okay. You see what I mean? Okay. So you don't try. I mean, unless you have, you only, you know. That's a way to do it. Okay. And then mid-January, you're going to get back with your other okay. team yep. and work for a month. Okay. And then you're going to push pause and then jump on your piece. Okay. So you flip it like that. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Okay? okay? Is that possible? That's possible. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, all right. See? <laughs> See how easy it is. Yeah. 
know, I don't think it should be at the end. It should probably be right in from the beginning, figuring that out. And, like, wait to see what happens later. It's like, how do you, like, contribute to, like, one of the things that make life? Like, just, like, break it and like, see what happens. I know. Um, it, it's more like, come through. It's okay. Five minutes? Okay, great. You can walk more slowly if you want. <laughs> um, but so how, yeah, so how do we break rules? For me, it's all about listening to what the piece needs. Listening to the camera. Listening to the story. Right? So I don't just like, some people like, break rules because they want to break rules. And that's just boring to me. That comes out of nowhere. It's just like, it, that's more the will of the artist, which is not as interesting as the will of the spirit, which will suggest things to you, right? So, if the characters say, I want to do this, let's go follow that. We'll follow that. If the story says, hey, this would be interesting, I'm going to follow the story. You see, does that make sense? So I'm not willfully breaking rules just because I gotta break rules and show the man, the dead white man, that I can do something else and go break. You know, I could go there and I, I go there all the time. But that's not why I'm gonna break a rule, right? I'm gonna break a rule because my character wants to do something different or more or extra, you know? Um, especially when we're doing adaptations or working with established text, you know? Um, the writer, I feel like the, the writers who might have lived a long time ago and they're holding your hand or saying, push the wheel forward, girl, keep pushing it forward. And they're very excited if we're respectful to them, if we're not just going to kick their shit to the curb and do whatever I want to do. That's so lame. Not lame, that's actually inappropriate to say. Um, but that's, that's just, there are better choices to make. You know?
a little louder. Okay. One mic time, parallel to. Parallel to another. And so I'm trying, it's very like repeating, it's repeating history basically. And I'm trying to make, I'm trying to find um, a character that would represent one. Ah, you're trying to find a character that would represent one thing. Right. So like, like, like two different characters. Yeah, so you're talking character now. Yeah. I say find, yeah, find a character. But there are two, like, two characters. So find two characters. Yeah. <laughs> or like sliding doors. When it's Paltrow. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm serious. Because, because, you know what I mean? Because it sounds like you are interested in people and what they're going through. And being, and my personal thing, you, to have... To have a play, you watch a play or a movie, whatever, and everybody comes away thinking the same thing about the thing, and oh, boo -boo, you know, and people come away thinking 500 things that you created something, that you created a feast instead of just a snack or a meal. You know, I don't know. It's just a thought. Hey, it's going to be the new year, and. Um, Think about what you want for yourself in the year, you know, and not just yourself, think about what you want for the world, think about the good things that you want to bring into the world, that you want to manifest for the world in 2019, right? Because we are relying on you, we are relying on you to pull us through. Are you coming back? Are you coming back? Quite yet. We don't have dates quite yet because Under the Radar is going to be taking over the building and then I'm going to be in rehearsal. Right, right. So, I know. So, but we will have dates because it's, it's so fun and, and easy. We'll have dates and we'll put them out there on the website. On the website, we'll email you, we'll tweet them, it'll be out there. Okay, so we'll be on the Insta, okay. Awesome. Thanks so much. Have a happy new year.